Kansas. Bleeding Kansas. They're sure trying hard to start a war right here. Yeah, some of them are trying to stop one. It's kind of hard to figure out who's going to what. Well, what about those senators walking out like that? I'm telling you, smokestack, this country is falling to pieces. Oh, no, it ain't. It'll take a lot more than arguments for that to happen. And even if we do have a real shooting war, it can only end one way. Why? like old man Bruce himself. Yeah, he's the only one that gets so mad. The rest of them are used to us by now. You're not supposed to do any killing, Janice. Who's killing? Tell you this, then, General. It'll be impossible to finish the line by March unless you furnish me with a military guard to protect my construction crews. We're not at war, Mr. Johnson. That's why we can't send uniformed soldiers into a border state like Kansas at this time. The people who are tearing up my tracks and frightening my construction crews into quitting ought to know the United States Army is back in the Kansas Pacific. If they did... They might very possibly start shooting. The first shot is what starts wars, sir. And our object is to finish this railroad first, so we can supply our entire system of frontier posts with men and equipment before a possible armed invasion from the south. All right, General. Even if you won't furnish troops, I'll try to get started again. Excuse me, sir. Ask Captain Nelson to come in, please, Sergeant. Who's Captain Nelson? He's an Army engineer, Mr. Johnson. One of the best men we've got. I'm going to lend him to you. Well, what do I need him for? I've got a construction boss now who's as good a railroad man as you can find anywhere. Nelson won't interfere with him, but he'll get your railroad built if anybody can. Well, I don't see how. General, I've told you we need at least a troop of soldiers, and you assigned me one man. An army engineer who's probably never built anything bigger than a footbridge. The Kansas Pacific is a military project, Mr. Johnson. Come in. Captain Nelson reporting as ordered, sir. At ease, Captain. Nice to see you again. Thank you, sir. This is Mr. Sherman Johnson, Captain Nelson. How do you do? How do you do, sir? Naturally, the captain will handle this assignment wearing civilian clothes, Mr. Johnson. You'll identify him to your employees as a civilian engineer. All right, General. Now let's get busy. First, you've gone this far. Is that correct? That's right. The end of track is 14 miles west of Rockwood, Kansas. We stopped construction there six weeks ago. We haven't moved an inch since.
Are you going to drink that coffee, or are you just going to stir it until it evaporates? Oh, I'm sorry, Dad. Fine lunch, Miss Barber. Thanks, Gus. Where are you going? Outside. I think I'll polish up the engine a little bit. Again? What do you want to do? Wear it out? Oh, no. Well, then, I think I'll chop some cooking wood for Miss Barber. That'll be fine, Gus. Thanks. You're welcome. Someday I'm going to take a 10-pound sledge to that pipe, and I hope it's in your ugly face when I do. I've been waiting for you to try that for 22 years now, you miserable Irish polecat. You're fired. <laughs> you, you can't, can't fire, fire me. me. I, I quit, quit two, two hours, hours ago. And now that you two have finished your conversation for the day, why don't you play a little chess for a change? Chess. Huh. I'll help you with the dishes. Huh. Casey never calls before noon. I wonder if... Ah, uh, Casey's probably just lonely and wants to chat. Yeah, couldn't be anything important. just arrived at the Rockwood office. It's for you, Dad, from Washington. Washington? I don't know anybody in Washington. What do you want him to do, send it back? Oh, tell Casey to open it up and read it to me. I mean, send it to me. I already have. Hire biggest crew possible and start laying track immediately. Smokestack, oh, this is what? it! What? Well, this is what we've been waiting Wait, for. Wait, there's more. must have made a mistake. No, Dad, I wish I had. Well, he can't do that to me. Why, I've been putting down track for 20 years without having any construction engineer telling me how. I ain't gonna stand for it. What have I been telling you all these weeks, Dad? This job's been a headache since the beginning. And Johnson knew it when he sent you out here. You're right. He just don't need me anymore. So instead of coming right out and firing me, he put somebody else in charge. I think you're both wrong. You're still the boss, Cal. This engineer will probably just supervise a little. Then when he sees how well things are going, he'll... They won't be going well. They haven't gone well since the day you started the Kansas Pacific. Oh, Dad, you belong back east. We can have a decent place to live and a little comfort. You've certainly earned it after 20 years of building railroads. And you won't have any trouble getting work back there. I should have listened to you in the first place. The sooner we can get packed, the sooner we can leave. Well, go on, Smokestack. Get ready. In the first place, I got nothing to get ready. And in the second place, I'm not leaving. What? I said I'm not leaving. I've worked for Sherman Johnson just as long as you have, Cal. I think he's a smart man and a fair boss. And I'm sure he has good reasons for any decisions he makes. Besides, well, it's not just my nature to quit something I'd start. Smokestack, you and I have been together for over 20 years. Oh, I can get all the work I want back east, you know that. But, well, it just won't seem right if you don't come along. I'll miss you, Cal. You too, Barbara. Daddy's just trying to get you to change your mind. He'll come with us. No, I'm serious. I've never quit yet, and come to think of it, Cal, you never have either. Ah, this is different. Sure, it's different. The country's about ready to bust wide open. And a line like the Kansas Pacific might help to hold it together. And you want to quit just because they're sending a construction engineer out. He's probably some kid just out of college who thinks you can build a railroad with a slide rule. 
Well, he'll need all the help he can get. So I'll stick around. He's got a point. Johnson must have some reason. It does look like we might have a war. Dad, don't you start talking about the war, too. What's the sense in worrying about something that'll probably never happen? Well, if we worry enough, maybe it won't happen. You're staying. I guess old Smokestack's right this time. We've handled these diploma boys before, you know. He'll learn soon enough to stay out of our way. Well, all right. But you've got to promise me one thing. If this man turns out to be impossible, we're leaving. I'm not going to let anyone push you around. Have you ever seen anybody push me around and get away with it? Besides you and your mother. Smokestack! Get that pile of tin warmed up and take us into town. You heard him, Gus. Fire up. We're going back to work. About the application, we'll let you know. Your bulletin board says no construction until further notice. It'll all be changed when the boss gets here. It should be changed now. I understand track layers are hard to get. Mister, do you want a job or don't you? I've got a job. My name's John Nelson. John Nelson? Name sounds familiar. I knew some Nelsons in Providence, but they all had red hair. Different Nelsons, I expect. I'm sure they are. I'm the new construction engineer. Oh, I see. You must be the man that Mr. Johnson telegraphed to Bob. That's right. Have a chair. Where will I find Mr. Bruce? Oh, he'll be along any minute. You'll hear the engine. Thanks. He's figuring out making some changes around here, I expect. Very possibly. Telegraph operators are even harder to find than track layers. I'll remember that. use it. Thank you. What do you men want? I'll tell you what we don't want. You and your rebel friends. I've told you before, Corbin, I live in this town and I'm going to stay here. Casey? Huh? 
Well, I don't know. But your new construction engineer is right in the middle of it. Don't look like he's using a slide rule now, does it? Thanks. I'm Bill Quantrill. You're welcome. My name's oh, Doc. Hello, Barbara. Nice to see you. This is Mr. Bruce and Miss Barbara Bruce. Ma Mr. Nelson, your new construction engineer. Well, how are you? How do you do, sir? What's this all about? Just an ordinary fight, Mr. Bruce. I saw Mr. Quantrill get jumped by three men and figured the odds were a little heavy. What was it all about? Few local citizens think the town of Rockwood might be better off if I live somewhere else. Corbin! Are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. But if he's your new construction engineer, when you go back to work on that railroad of yours, you'll go back without me. One of your men, Mr. Bruce? He was. Probably the best gang boss I had. Feelings are running a little strong in Kansas these days, Nelson. I'm from the South, and I've made no secret where my sympathies lie. I see. Good day, Barbara. Gentlemen. Construction hands again, Bill. Looks like the whole town's signing up. Starts out that way every time until we get busy. Max, you and Stone and Morey, go and get yourselves jobs on the railroad. You too, Janice. Don't bunch up, go in one at a time. Right, I'll go in and sign up. Say, who's this new fella Nelson they've got? I don't know anything about him yet, except that he's a construction engineer. All you boys who get jobs, keep your eyes on him. I got a feeling he might give us a little trouble. We can give him more than he gives us. I wouldn't be surprised if we can. But don't be too obvious about it, any of you. That stunt you pulled last month, shooting up Bruce and his men, wasn't such a smart idea. Why not? Because that kind of foolishness is likely to stir up more trouble than we want. First thing you know, they'll send troops here. Good. Yankee uniforms will make nice targets. <laughs> it isn't our job to start the war, men. We're here to stop that train, or at least to delay it. The longer we keep the Yankees from reaching their western forts by rail, the more time we'll give the Confederacy to get ready. What we're doing is important, very important. And don't any of you forget it. I'll tell you when it's time to start shooting. Until that time, you'll have to follow orders. Are there any arguments? No arguments, boss. I guess some of us are just a little eager. There'll be plenty of action for all of us before long. Maybe even more than we want. Good luck, boys. I'll see you here tomorrow night. Right. Come on. Seven in the morning. Next. Fill it out, sign at the bottom. There doesn't seem to be any problem hiring men. Why should there be? The pay is good and so is the food. It's never hard to get plenty of men. The trick is to keep them. Why don't you rest for a while, Mr. Bruce? I'll take over for you. Suit yourself. Sign it. Joe Farley. All right, be here at 7 tomorrow morning. Uh, just a minute, Joe. You look like a man who's done a little hunting and trapping. Am I right? Yeah, that's right. You own a good rifle? Sure. I'd like you to bring it with you tomorrow morning. 
Well, mister, there's nothing but a few jackrabbits out on the prairie. I want you to be a railroad guard, Joe. Sort of a policeman. Pays the same. All right? Yes, sir. Sounds like a good idea to me. Be glad to do it. And if any of your friends have good rifles and know how to handle them, why, tell them to see me. Right, sir. What's the idea of that? It's for the protection of the railroad. They're entitled to it, especially in these times. How many of these armed guards you figuring on hiring? As many as we need. Forty or fifty if we have to. You realize how much this is going to cost the company? We'll have to provide horses, cottages, food, besides their pay. That's not our worry. We're here to build a railroad. All right, you men, form another line around here. We don't want to hang around here all day. Fill it out and sign it. Sunshine and pretty girls go together. You don't say. Sorry, friend. Why don't you watch those big clumsy feet of yours? I didn't do it on purpose. Get your hands off me. All right, get back to work. Stay out of the way. Let's go. Just a minute. Get out. You're through. Now listen, Nelson, that's no way to build a railroad. You can't fire a man just for stumbling. He didn't stumble, I was deliberate. You're crazy. Why would I want to see you this You know man? why better than I do. Now get out of here, I'll throw you out. <laughs> Take a good look at this man, and if any of you see him around here again, shoot him. If anybody else has any idea about holding up construction, he can leave now. That was nice work, Gus. You saved the man's life by thinking fast. Hey, Nelson. A lot of things like that have been happening around here. I figured it was just bad luck. Some of it probably was, but not this time. I'm sorry to have overruled your orders. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, you didn't? No. You're the construction boss. I'm just an engineer. Whatever he is, we should have had somebody like him around here a long time ago. Six times nine is 54. Four, six times three is 18, and five is 22. 23. 23, that's what I said. Now, six times one is six, plus two is eight. That's 834 more ties we'll need by the end of the week, providing nobody quits. Or it's fired by our new construction engineer. Oh, he was right about firing that fellow today, Barbara. If we can weed out the troublemakers, maybe things will improve around here. Well, it seems to me there must be an easier way of doing it than half killing them. Now, look, even though you were brought up in a railroad car, there are some things about this business you don't understand. I understand it when I see someone trying to take away your job, and that's exactly what he's doing. Oh, no, he isn't. Now, if you'll just listen to me a minute, I... 
Come on in. Good evening. Hello, Nelson. I'd like to talk with you if you're not busy. Sure, sit down. Barbara, maybe Mr. Nelson would like a cup of coffee. Oh, I sure would. Thank you, Barbara. You're very welcome. idea today and I'd like to try it out on you. I think that if we rigged a couple of simple derricks using block and tackles, why we could save quite a lot of manpower. Setting the rails in place, you mean? Yes, sir. I've noticed that it takes five or six men to move each rail from the side into the roadbed. This way one man could provide the lifting power, another could guide the rails, and that would leave four or five men free to work on the roadbed. Well, I don't see why it wouldn't work. I'll tell Smokestack and Gus to figure I'm making a trip to town and get you whatever you need. They can pick up our other stuff at the same time. <laughs> well, that's fine. I fooled you, didn't I, young fella? You thought I was going to give you an argument, didn't you? Yes, sir, I did. And if I had, what would you have done? Well, I don't know exactly. I do. You'd have built them anyway. I told you today, Mr. Bruce, I'm not here to fight with you. I just want to get this line across Kansas as fast as possible, that's all. Well, I'll admit I didn't like the idea of old man Johnson sending somebody out here to take over. But he sent the right man. We'll get along. I'm sure we will, sir. We'll get along even better if you quit calling me sir. This ain't the army, you know. You'll dictate a list of the things you need, Mr. Nelson. I'll telegraph Casey and have them ready with our orders. All right. Now, well, let's see. I'll need a dozen two by fours, eight feet long, a dozen lengths of two by 12 planking, 10 feet long, 100 feet of one inch rope. Let's see, I can get all the chain I need around here, and if I need any more wood, I'll use ties. I guess that's all. Very well. I'd like to talk to you for a moment, Barbara. I just want to say that I'm glad to be here, working with you and your father, and I hope you'll get over your resentment of me quickly. What makes you think we'll resent you, Mr. Nelson? Well, I can understand why you might. But I'm not here to take your father's job from him. He realizes that, I'm sure. We have the same goal, to get the Kansas Pacific built as soon as we can. And to make yourself a reputation as a brilliant young engineer. That's not true. I'm not a career man. I'm an engineer trying to do a job. And I'll need all the help I can get. If my work isn't satisfactory... I'm not talking about your work. Look, I've tried every way I know how to make friends with you. You're not making it very easy for me. I'm sorry, Mr. Nelson. It isn't that I dislike you personally. Good. But I can't very well feel friendly towards someone the company has sent out to replace my father. And that's obviously why you're here. He's too good a railroad man to, to let it interfere with his work. But I can see how it's hurt him. And I don't like it. Frankly, I, I'm doing everything I can to persuade him to leave here and go back where he'll be appreciated. But he's appreciated here, believe me. I wish I could, Mr. Nelson. You will. Someday you'll understand that. And I hope it's soon. Because then you and I can be friends. And I'd like that very much. Even, Mr. Nelson. Good evening, Joe. I was just fixing to send some of the boys out in night guard. Four on, four off, all right? Yeah, that's fine. Hey, the way you talk, you must have had some kind of military service. Yes, sir. Under Winfield Scott, the Texas campaign. You've been in the saddle all day, Joe. Lend me your horse and I'll post a night sentry. Yes, sir. Go tell the cook to keep a big pot of coffee on. Yes, All sir. night. Well, and Nelson don't talk like a railroad man. You know something else? I never seen a construction engineer ride a horse like that either. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah, but I ain't talking about it. And neither are you. Good night, Cal. Good night.
850 ties, 150 rails, 25 cases dynamite, 200 feet fuse, 10 sledges with extra handles, 12 2 by 4s 8 feet long. 12 planks, 2 by 12 10 feet long, 100 feet rope, 1 inch. Thanks, Casey. The only thing that sounds good is the 25 cases of dynamite. That's a lot of stuff they're ordering. Sounds like it's almost worth wrecking that train to get rid of. No, I've got other plans for that train when the time comes. What you said, Janice, makes a little sense. That dynamite does sound interesting. The only way I'd be interested in it would be if Nelson was sitting on it and I had a match. Never mind Nelson. If we can stop this line without bloodshed, that's what we're going to do. Is that understood? All right. Just so long as we stop it. Good. Now about that dynamite. They'll pick it up with the engine probably in the morning. When they bring it in and get it unloaded, you'll be riding around, Janice, and this is what I want you to do. We ought to be able to keep this pace up for a few more days. At least until we get into the rocky country, and even that shouldn't be too bad. We won't have to tunnel. We won't? No, I figure that by swinging the right of way north a little, we can take advantage of the terrain. There's a natural pass right here that won't require too much blasting. Well, that's good. So that's where you've been all morning. Right. Well, John, I want to give you a little advice. Sure, Cal. What is it? Well, if I was you, I wouldn't go riding around all over this country without sidearms, at least. Maybe you're right. Thanks. Now, it looks like this little northern swing you got laid out is going to take more ties and rails than I got figured. Yeah, these two curves here will run uh, three-eighths of a mile more than a straightaway. At 660 rails to the mile, we'll need uh, 248 more rails. All right, I'll take care of it. There's old Smokestack, right on time. He always gets here just before we run out of supplies. and ask me and get your full dynamite off my train. It's making me nervous. Ah. Two, three men, over here. Unload this dynamite. Put it on that flat car, over there.
nothing we can do for him, men. Let's get back to work. We got track delay, men. Not me, mister. I'm through. Let's get going. I'll see to it that nothing like this happens again. How are you going to do that? From now on, we'll keep the dynamite well away from the tracks. Take the rest of the day off, boys, and we'll take a fresh start tomorrow morning. Wait a minute. No matter where you put that stuff, it can always go up anytime. I'm scared, mister, and I admit it. I quit. Me too. Well, I'm staying. They pay good wages around here, and I need to work. Hey, I need it too, but I need to keep breathing more. I've had enough. They're in trouble, John. Yeah, I know it. I could have sworn I heard a gunshot just before that stuff blew. No, and I think that fight was staged, too. We'll soon find out. I'll make one of those monkeys talk or... Oh, they've had plenty of time to get away by now. Well, what's next? There isn't much more we can do, except wait until tomorrow morning and find out how many men we still got working for us. What about the men who did this? That's a good question, Cal, but I got a better one. What about the man behind them? Who do you mean? I wish I knew. But there's somebody, somebody who's determined to keep this line from going through. This has all been organized, the sabotage, the threats, the unrest. I'm sure of it. The day we had our first death. Looks like we're already in the war everybody keeps talking about. Yeah, this is worse than war. In a war, at least you know you're fighting. And while they were trying to figure out what hit them, Max and I lit out. It all worked out just the way you figured it would. And the construction gang didn't need much pushing to quit either. Now they got less than half the men they started with. Good. You know, we didn't get all that dynamite. What do you mean? There's still a couple of cases in the tool tent. It'd be a shame to let that go to waste, Bill. I'd kind of like to see that locomotive of theirs in pieces. Hello, John. Hal. Good evening, Barbara. Payroll's being delivered tomorrow morning. Well, we better take the train in town tonight, then, and bring the payroll back with us tomorrow. Tonight? What for? I want to take Barbara into Rockwood and leave her there. What did you say? You and Casey can switch jobs. I can't have you stay out here any longer. It's much too dangerous. I've only stayed here as long as I have because of my father, Mr. Nelson. But if you've decided to send me away, I I'm through. I quit. What about you, Dad? Oh, Barbara, you just don't understand. Oh, yes, I do. Maybe Mr. Nelson has convinced you that he only wants to help you, but I know better. Don't you see, he wants us to quit. Well, let's let him have what he wants. We'll go back east. No, I'm going to stay, Barbara, because I'm needed, and so are you. We've got to finish this line before the war begins. War? Why does everyone keep Listen talking? to me, Barbara. Maybe there's going to be a war, and maybe there isn't. But we've got to be ready for it. The Kansas Pacific is a United States Army project, a military line serving the Western forts. Army project? But when... When the Army sent him out to take over. I'm sorry I didn't tell you about it before, but I couldn't. I don't know how your father found out about it, but that doesn't matter now. Well, I just guessed. The important thing is that I... that we need you. I didn't realize. I, I thought the war talk was just talk. I hope it is just talk. So do I. I... I'll help him. Of course I will. I... Good night, Cal. Good night, Jeff. John. Couldn't I stay here and help just as well? That's the nicest thing I've heard since I arrived in Kansas. You mean I can't stay? No, I mean you finally stopped calling me Mr. Nelson. Please, John, let me stay. It's too dangerous, Barbara. 
I can't take a chance on anything happening to you. Good night. Night, John. saddlebags or I'll put a bullet in them. You got five seconds. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Don't. I'll open them. I want these 
these men arrested. They assaulted a guard and stole that dynamite from the Kansas Pacific. You'll find a third man lying out on the prairie. Let's go. accident we had today. Well, I'm offering you extra wages to come back. Double pay for every man who stays with the line until we hit the Colorado border. Well, I don't know about the rest of them, Mr. Nelson, but I'll go back to work. I like the way you do business. That goes for me, too. Thanks, men. I'll see you on the job first thing in the morning. Right now, the drinks are on me. <laughs> Drink with me, Nelson. I owe you one. All right. Bourbon, please, Chuck. Make it two. Your health. Thanks very much. Just offhand, I'd say that you were regarding me with suspicion, my friend. That's a possibility. You don't think I had anything to do with that incident, do you? I hope you didn't, Quantrill. Two men were killed today. One of mine and one of somebody else's. It might have been more than that if you'd fired into that dynamite. Would you have done it? That's going pretty far just to prove simple robbery. You're a dangerous man, Nelson. There are others around who are much more dangerous. Thanks for the drink. for this one. Get out of sight. Get him. Yeah, go nowhere. Get down! Can the engine shove those rocks off the track? I might. 
But we'd be going so slow when we got by him, they could shoot right into the cab. I'll take care of that. Can you handle the throttle? I'll try. If we get by us, we can't miss. What about the payroll? Never mind that. It's Nelson we're after. but I don't see smoke there. Nelson's all alone in the cab. Something must have happened. It's his arm, Cal. What happened, John? Ambush. Gus is dead. I can handle the engine, Mr. Nelson. I'll take Smokestack to a doctor. No, I'll put him in the caboose and telegraph for a doctor. All right. Easy, fellas. Careful now. All right. Easy. This is bad, John. Gus killed, smokestack hurt. Carol, he's going to be all right. What's going to happen next? Nothing if I can help it. We're going to double the arm guard right now. Then we're going to start and lay track again. the sheriff. They need a new one now. You had to kill him. Yeah. Some of our men are missing. West Stone and Moria. Dead. Nelson killed them. Just a minute, Janice. You'll never get near him now. I'm sure he's put on extra guards. What do you expect us to do? Stand by and let him build that railroad? That's right. We've got enough men to give him a bad time, boss. And we can recruit more without any trouble. We'll do that recruiting, all right. But right now, I have other plans for the Kansas Pacific. 
Tracks are one thing, but trains running on them are another. What's this all about? Let them spend their money on time building. They've got too many men now for us to stage any kind of an attack. But the minute they put a train on those tracks, we'll blow it off the prairie. With what? With artillery. We'll line up on the tracks from one of those uphill passes where the engine has to slow down. Are and... you figuring on stealing some cannons from the Yankee army? No, just requisitioning them from the Confederate army. Congratulations, John. Well, same to you. Somebody ought to be buying a few drinks around here. Because every day we finish the railroad, you know. Oh, I almost forgot. There's a telegram for you. It's a train coming in from Kansas City. We're in business, all right. And just in time. The war is very close, isn't it, John? It looks like it might be. All right, boys, on your toes. See any tracks when you came up? No, sir. I figured they covered them up so we couldn't trail them. Is that all, Cal? Yep. Everybody else is afraid of getting shot at with cannons. They won't use artillery on personnel. Trains are their targets. Well, these are the only men I've been able to convince of that. Repairing that track won't be easy, but we'll get it done. Let's go. What about Quantrill? We couldn't find him. Nobody around here has seen him for weeks.
Ben. How are you? Fine, Cap. Uh, Nelson. I'm not much of a secret anymore. What brings you here? Well, since we lost that last train, the general decided not to telegraph about the next one. Sent me to tell you. The next one? We can't risk another train until we locate those guns and put them out of action. You're going to risk it anyway, Captain. If you telegraph the general, it would take you a week to repair the damage. The week's up tomorrow. That's when the train's coming through. Ammunition again? And troops. Reinforcements for Kearney and the other Western forts. We can't wait any longer, Captain. All right. Joe. Sir? Can you round up a half a dozen men who can ride and shoot? You mean to go out after them cannons there? Yeah. There are a few boys I know that like that. They're not much on laying track in the middle of a ferry, but they ride and shoot real well. Good. Outside of that hill there, there's only one other piece of high ground between Rockwood and the Colorado border that commands the track. If they use those guns again, I figure that's where they'll be. I know the place you mean. You go back to the smokestack and meet me here in the morning. Yes, sir. Stanton, I have an idea. It may not work, but we have to try it. I want you to get back to Kansas City and hold up that troop train. I can't do that, Captain. Well, what I got in my mind won't take you long to set up. Now, here's the way it works. Breather, men. We ought to be able to see the pass from that next rise there. We won't get any rest then if those guns. Smoke stacks are all on that train. No wonder they make it this good time. Come on. Take a look. Commence firing. Get the rifles!
Get up. Sometimes I think I'd rather go off the war than to hang around here smelling that pipe. Shut up. Goodbye, Barbara. I'll be back. And I'll be here. Or wherever else the building is. is over soon so that young fella can come back and help us build that track all the way across the country. He'll be back. 